the car began rising into the air, going up with us in it. And after a period of time um, of this sensation of extreme speed rising upward, being pulled by some force that would not let go, uh, we, I, both actually of us, found ourselves outside of the car. Uh, we, we were not any longer seeing it. We were in a circular room that was uh, gray, um, just a nondescript gray. Uh, the, she and I were both standing there. There was a, a hallway uh, in front of us, and uh, there were some several gray aliens that came over and took my hands and began walking me down the hall. Can you describe the aliens? How high were they? Do they have hands, feet, uh, face? Uh, they do, yes, ma'am. Uh, they have very large heads. Uh, they're probably about three and a half to maybe four feet tall. Uh, the eyes are very dark, uh, slanted, uh, larger than human eyes. Uh, the, the mouth is nothing but a slit. Uh, I didn't notice any ears. The nose... Um, to me, all I could see was just a little, uh, tiny little structure. Uh, it, it didn't look like it was really used. Um, they're very thin. Uh, the, the, they do have two arms, two legs. The arms are longer um, than our, our arms. The hands are very different. Uh, the ones I saw had only four fingers, basically. Um, one could have been a thumb and three fingers. Uh, they're longer. Uh, they had what appeared to be, to, to me, uh, a kind of a fleshy pad on the end of the fingertips, um, almost like a, a suction pad, like on a, a frog type of thing. Um, they're very non-human looking. What did they do with you? Where did they brought you? They brought me to a room that was brightly lit. Um, they left Mother standing at that point. That was all I could recall was that Mother was still standing back there. Uh, they brought me forward into a room which uh, looked exactly, well, not exactly, but it, it's reminiscent of what a, a doctor's office would look like. It appeared to be a medical room. Uh, there was a table in there, and they led me over to the table and um, somewhere in the process I was disrobed and they laid me upon the table and, and um, performed some kind of medical procedures. Um, they appeared to be gynecological in nature and um, after a time of performing these procedures, they finally got through with whatever they were doing. And uh, then they, I, they got me on up from the table. Uh, the next thing that I recalled was being led out of that room into another room where, uh, it, this was a larger room. Uh, it was not as brightly lit as the medical room was. And uh, in the center of this room was what looked like a uh, man-sized tube, basically of glass or something clear, plastic, something. Uh, and standing in that tube was Mother, just standing there, unmoving. Um, and when I saw her, I was very distressed. I, I had the feeling, I, I didn't know really if Mother was alive. You know, she was standing there, not moving, not making any motions. Um, I was real upset. And you, were you scared, madam? Not, not terrorized scared. Just confused. You know, where are we? What's happened? And the first part was similar to hers, of course. You had the same story? Up to the point where we're on board the ship. But I'm in this same foyer or area that we came out in on the ship. And I saw her and these two little creatures going down the hall. Their backs were to me. And I was somewhat depressed in the thing about the fact that she's going and I'm here and I'd rather keep us all together. But she goes on and disappears. And 
seemingly a little bit of time passes and I'm looking around me to see what's going on. And then the next thing I know, I'm in that last room, the round one where that tube affair is. And in that room, I was never aware of the tube, but I did see the wall with the instruments on it. They looked like computer readouts, except they were scrolling from the right to the left instead of up and down like American ones do. <laughs> and then after that, I'm zooming out of the bottom of the car, I mean out of the bottom of this thing. And I looked up and saw this thing up over my head, the machine. And it had this iris eye on it that was just closing as we're going out. And we get back in the car. <laughs> it's hard uh, because you do feel isolated, even though you are fortunate enough to run into other people who have experienced these things. You still know that there are a lot of people out there that you can't talk to about this. You, you can't tell them that I talk to the aliens every night, you know, or whenever it is. Um, There's one so. person in the world who knows that you are telling the truth and that's your mom. Yes, thank God. <laughs> yeah, that uh, probably helped me more than anything. If I had had only my own memories, it, it would have been harder, but because mother and I shared that one, it's been a lot easier with with having a family member who was there and said the same thing exactly with no sharing you know of, of facts beforehand after all these years ma'am how do you feel about the story now i never had any particular ill feelings about it i was always interested in esoteric of one sort or another so to me it was just another part of it i was a fairy tale reader as a child <laughs> Are you feeling that's a fairy tale? No, but I mean, it's easier to accept something that is a little outside of ordinary daily life. If you have read a great deal in other ways, in other areas. So it didn't come as any particular stunning to me that it could be alien life. Because I had never had a belief that we were the only ones in the universe. It's ridiculous for us to have supposed that the world was all there was. So I had no problem accepting them. 